morning. It's great to see you today. So thankful you're here. Let's start off today with uh, prayer and how about a celebration, all right? Amen. This is what the Bible says in uh, Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 38. Peter said, change your life, repent, or turn to God and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins are forgiven. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises targeted to you, to your children, and to all who are far off, whomever, in fact, our Master God invites. That day, 3,000 took him at his word, were baptized, were signed up, and they committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, and the common meal in prayers. So um, we're going to celebrate in that today. It's just kind of interesting. We're going to baptize in water as part of our worship today, and we'll introduce to you. We have about 10 people being baptized today. This is a, yeah, let's give the Lord a hand clap. This is a sign or a picture uh, externally of what's happened internally. All of these people that have been baptized uh, uh, have confessed their belief in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, repent and be baptized. People say, well, do I need to be baptized to be saved? Do I receive the Holy Spirit when I'm baptized? Do I need the Holy Spirit in my life? What are all this? You know, it's amazing how we try to come up with a lot of questions. In the early church, they didn't question, say, now, mm, let me see, how long does a person have to be a believer before they can be baptized? Um, How are we sure that they're really a believer? What test did they pass? It just simply says, he says, repent and be baptized. And they said, I'm all in. It wasn't negotiating. It wasn't debating. It wasn't, well, what are the theological ramifications of that? I'm all in. Repent and be baptized. It's just that simple. So if you have become a Christ follower and you haven't been baptized, get at the tail of the line today. Uh, We'll give you a towel and we'll baptize you today. But I want you to stand, rejoice. As these people are going to be baptized, we're going to be singing in songs. When they come up out of the water, would you cheer as though that will remember when you were baptized in water? This is going to be a, a day that they will remember forever. Father, we commit this time to you. Um, it's a it's a somber time in our nation with all the shootings and everything that's going on. And Lord, we pray for those families. We pray for the protection of our kids. We thank you for the event that we had here Thursday that really laid down the reason why kids kill. And we thank you for that. It's not um, a political thing. It's not all these arguments that we make because we ha- we know half the knowledge. We don't know it all. And so we thank you for the truth that came out in this meeting Thursday. And we thank you that you've given us plans of how that we can better protect our kids in our region. But Lord, today uh, we take time to celebrate these who have made a choice and a decision today to just obey you. uh, Repent and be baptized and be filled with the Spirit. We believe that today in your name. Remain standing. Anita's going to introduce the uh, baptismal candidate. Amen. What an honor it is to be able to do this this morning. So first we have Charlotte Mahan. This is Terry's aunt from Chicago, who's our online church, and she's down here to get baptized. Then we're going to have Serenity Strack, Ariana Rivera Velez, Sue Baker, Stephen Moniz, Ed. Oh, okay. Well, can we take the light off of me? I'll go over there and put the light over there so we can see these people. Okay, so Charlotte Mahan, Serenity Strack, Iriana Rivera Velez, Sue Baker, Stephen Moniz, oh my gosh, my phone just turned off, Um, Ed Ogborn, Cassandra Orr, Jorge Pagan, and Sam Davis. Let's worship. Let's put our hands together. We're going to do a lot of clapping today. And I hope you brought your dancing shoes too. At break of day, in hope we arise. We speak your name. We lift our eyes, tune our hearts into your beat. Where we walk, 
there you'll be with fire in our eyes a life's a light your love untamed it's blazing out with streets of glow forever bright your glory's breaking through the night you will never fade away your love is here to stay by my side in my life shining through me every day you will never fade away your love is here to stay by my side in my life shining through me every day You're in my heart forever. You're in my heart you start a church service. Amen. Oh man, this is so exciting this morning. All these people, their lives have been changed and they want to share it with you, their church family. Can we just give it up for them again? Father God, we are so in love with you. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunities that you give us that we get to come into this place and we get to We get to worship you. Father God, as we sing this next song, will you let these these, these words go deep, deep into our hearts, God? Because we want to be fully devoted to you, God.
You have done more than our minds could ever think. Dreams and visions go beyond what we can see. Our hearts united in the wonder of it all. We stand united in the wonder of your love. Fully devoted, we follow after the one who gave it all. Christ alone we praise. Fully devoted, we follow after the one who gave it all. Christ alone, Christ alone be praised. All honor and glory here to you, Father. There's no limit. Your word is reaching all the earth. All consuming, your love is bringing hearts to life. Our hearts united in the wonder of it all. We stand united in the wonder of your love, fully devoted. We follow after the one who gave it all. Christ alone we praise, fully devoted. We follow after the one who gave it all. Christ alone we praise. Christ alone. No matter what it takes for the glory of your name, Christ alone be praised. Come on, sing it out. We're stepping out in faith so the world would know your name. Christ alone be praised. Sing no matter, no matter what it takes, for the glory of your name, Christ alone be praised. We're stepping out in faith so the world would know your name, Christ alone be praised. No matter, no matter what it takes for the glory of your name, Christ alone be praised. Come on, praise Him. We're stepping out in faith so the world would know your name. Christ alone be praised. No matter takes for the glory of your name, Christ alone be praised. We're stepping out in faith so the world would know your name, Christ alone be praised. Fully devoted. We follow the one who gave Christ alone we praise Fully devoted We follow the one who gave it all Christ alone, Christ alone we praise Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough.
everything I need. Come on, you sing Christ. Christ is in you. Everything I Could ever satisfy through every trial, my soul will say, No turning back. I've been set free. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ, my all in all. The joy of my salvation. Oh, and this hope will never fail. Heaven is our home. My soul will sing, Jesus is fear, to God be the glory, Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross, the cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Oh, Christ is enough for me. Oh, Christ, you are love for me. Everything I need. In you. Everything I need, Christ is enough. Christ is enough for me. Yeah. Everything I need is in you. Oh, everything I need. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
there's no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Come on! I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning I want us to sing that bridge one more time, and I just, I just want the voices, because I want each and every one of us to hear our brothers and sisters say what they have decided. Can we do that? Can we do that together as a body this morning? One voice. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Oh, we're not turning back. Oh, we tasted of you and we're not turning back. Yes. Before you take a seat this morning, if you can, you might just need to stand for the whole service. I don't know. I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit down. But before you take a seat, before you get ready to hear God's word, would you do me a favor? And I want you to turn around to three people. Give them a high five or fist bump. Somebody said last week because of flu season they want to give a fist bump. Whatever you want to do, just greet your neighbors around you. All right, one way or the other, you better pray, because when I have to hold something, I preach twice as long. So. Hey, weren't those baptisms awesome this morning? Wow. Who says adults don't get baptized? Hey, just in case that you're interested, when we have our picnic in the park coming up in uh, April or March, whenever that is, May something, June, July. We're going to do a dunkathon. We're just going to dunk a lot of people at that time. It's going to be great. But I'd like to say welcome to those of you that are watching online. Just got a note that someone there in West Africa joining with us this morning. We welcome you and all over. We're so glad you're joining with us today. Wow. If it's your first time to be with us or uh, um, you've never filled out a card, be sure to fill out one of these cards today. We all fill out one. They're in the back of your chair. So would you take that out and fill that out? And listen, if you're a first-time guest, if you've been a first-time guest since uh, Christmas, we're having a house party 
on the 25th, the last Sunday of this month. And it's just for you to get to meet some of our pastors and some of our key leaders. It'll be here an hour and 15 minutes to just to get to know you and you get to know us. The only way we can give you an invite is if you fill out one of these cards and be sure you put your phone number on there so that we can text you and your email so that we can let you know. Also, those of you who live in the villages, Thursday night we'll be doing a meeting out there. So if you haven't received an invitation, that means we probably don't have your information. So if you'll do that on a connection card, that will be so very, very wonderful. I just want to say thank you to most of you who uh, gave me uh, birthday cards and some gifts for my birthday. However, I got one. That's really interesting. I kept this card. I have, I have two cards in my desk that I have kept for a long time. And both of them are cat cards. To those of you who don't think I like cats. But the first cat card had a $5,000 check in it uh, to be used at, at the church. So I said, I'll keep this card. I like this card. It's one of my favorite cards. This one was for my birthday. Thanks to Rob, one of my armor bearers, I, and he blames it off on his wife. But it also had a, a check in it for my birthday, so that makes me want to keep it. But I want you to hear it just for those of you that are cat lovers. Get ready. Here you go. So for those of you who think... For those of you who think I don't like cats or I don't like people, I like both. All right. How we go with that. OK, let me remind you, uh, we have uh, a quarter auction coming up to help send our kids to summer camp. You got a little brochure on this when you came in. Uh, you can pre-order all your food out there and uh, it'll be awesome. And if you came in today and you didn't get one of these or you didn't get a, ser a sermon uh, study notes, if you'll raise your hand, the ushers will be happy to give you one of those and. So just go ahead and grab one of those. We thank God that we're able to do that. Well, if you have your Bibles, open with me to Acts chapter 2. We'll be going there, Acts chapter 2, and um, we, that's our theme passage that we've been looking at. Also, let me remind you, in December, Anita and I are hosting a trip to the Holy Land. If you'd like to go with us, there are brochures that are out there. You need to go ahead and get signed up so you can get some of the early bird rates it's the safest place in the world to be right now, regardless of what you see on TV. Uh, it's amazing how people show what they want to show, but they don't show the other stuff. So I'm going to tell you, it'll change your life. So pick up a brochure and join us as we go to the Holy Land. Do you have your Bible? Let's hold it up this morning and let's make our, com our confession together, can we? This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is life to me. Today I receive the Word. I confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive, I am obedient, and I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me remind you, uh, three weeks ago, we started this new series called the Fully Devoted Life Challenge. And we said we're going to do this together. For five weeks, we're going to take this challenge to become the beginning of a fully devoted um, follower of Christ. The Father's House mission, the reason we exist, the reason we exist is this. Read it with me. The Father's House exists to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Let's say it again. Leading people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. So we said uh, three Sundays ago, what does that look like? What does it look like to be a fully devoted follower? What does it look like to be a follower of Christ? And then I talked to you about the, the wonderful red velvet cake mix here. On the front is a beautiful picture of what you could have if you put the ingredients that are on the back. There's some eggs and some oil, some water, and you just beat the daylights out of it and uh, put it in to cook it right. But if you leave something out, it's not going to be, it may look, but it's not going to taste really good. Or if you add something to it, that's the wrong thing. It's going to affect that. So I said, in the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, there is a passage of Scripture that shows us the ingredients, that shows us the elements, that shows us the actions of the early church that created them 
to be fully devoted so that they could change their world, change their community. And so we want to add those things to our life. We said the object of this challenge, if you missed it, is first of all, we want to discover and then engage in those five elements. It's not the only thing, but it's five that gets us started. I don't think we'll ever become fully devoted till we get to heaven, but we should be moving in that direction, right? I mean, you shouldn't be stuck at the same place that you were stuck five years ago. Some of you keep going around the same circle, and I hear the Lord saying, you've gone around this mountain long enough. Let's get something in your life so now you can move forward and you can be who he wants you to be. So we said in this series with these five ingredients, these five elements, these five actions, we're taking big steps toward becoming and fulfilling our God-given potential. We said another goal of this is that we're strengthening our relationships with God and our relationships with one another. You see, if you're going to develop a relationship with one another, you've got to be in the proximity of one another. It's sort of like the guy that was engaged to be married, and he told his girlfriend or his fiance, he said, I'll write you every day. And he did. He wrote her every day, and she married the mailman. Absence does not cause the heart to grow fonder, regardless of what you say. If there's absence, if there's not that proximity of a relationship, things begin to deteriorate. If I'm not developing that relationship with God daily, then things begin to deteriorate. If I'm not developing a relationship with other people, then it begins to deteriorate in my life. And we said, lastly, one of the things that we're doing in this challenge is to understand the church is a family that we belong to, not a place that we go to, right? It's not a building, but it's family. Say, we're family. So let me give you a a review. Number one in your notes. The first week we talked about, read it with me, cultivate authentic community. Say it again. Cultivate authentic community. In other words, that just means you're part of somebody else's life and they're part of your life. We say it here that life is accomplished better in circles than in rows. As far as relationships, you can't really know the people on your row, but in small relationships, people who serve and people who are in a life group together, uh, the Bible says he, God, sets the solitary in families. It's not his will that we be loners. And so the scripture says a threefold cord is not easily broken. Here's another one. Two are better than one. If one falls down, the other will lift him up. But woe to him who is alone when he falls down. Here's the question. Who's got your back? Who is it that will help you on your worst day? You see, if you don't have somebody like that in your life, then you need to get in a small group, a serving group or a life group. And you can still sign up in the the foyer today before you leave. Week two, we said this. Here's a second ingredient. Commit, commit to a lifestyle of worship. Say that with me. Commit to a lifestyle of worship. We said last week we were designed for worship. And the weekly worship service, remember uh, the writer of Hebrews says, don't forsake the assembling of yourself. Don't forsake and neglect that. Because when you come on the weekend services, you refocus and recenter. Remember I said that years ago, some of us remember uh, records. Those big round things with a hole in the middle. And you put them on and they went around and around. You put the needle on it and you got back sound, right? But when they first started making records, about one out of every thousand was off center by just a little. And you couldn't see it with the naked eye. But you could see it. uh, You could hear it when you began to play that. It was sort of like instead of music, it was like... And so we said, as we receive input into our mind through the eye gate and the ear gate all week long, we come to church on Sunday morning to refocus, to recenter, and remind ourselves it's all about Him and not about us. We said that's only one part of worship, coming together here, worshiping in song. But the other part is taking our everyday life and letting it reflect the glory of our Maker. I have an iPhone here, and I talked about that last week. And I said, here with the iPhone, 
Every time this iPhone does what it was created to do, when it does what it was created to do, it reflects back on Steve Jobs and those at Apple who made this particular phone. And there are those days it doesn't do what it shouldn't do, and I want to just sling it across the room. I have not been known to throw it. Not far, just sort of down, all right? Because, you know, I think that'll help it a little bit, you know? Like when something doesn't come up, I keep pushing the same button over and over and over and over. And Techie Anita says, that's not going to work. It may not work, but it sure makes me feel a whole lot better to be able to push that sucker. But when this phone does what it was created to be, it reflects back to the maker. So when we leave out of here today, whatever we are, if we're a plumber, a carpenter, a salesperson, if we're a teacher, wherever we are in our life, our everyday life should reflect back to people and they see Jesus in us. They see Jesus in us. So let's look today at the uh, next thing that we want to talk about. So let's look at our theme verse. It's there in your notes. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together in the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So we've already looked at two ingredients there in verse 44. They cultivated an authentic community. They met together in house to house. They had, they had a, a, a common life. And then they committed to a lifestyle of worship, verse 47. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of people. But today I want to look at verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the Word. They devoted themselves to the Word. They were growing. They were into the Word, and they were growing. Why did they devote themselves to the apostles' Word, to the preaching of the Word, to the teaching of the Word? Because they wanted to grow. Say that with me. Because they wanted to grow. You see, you can sit here and say, oh, yeah, okay, I'll come to church, but I don't want to be in a small group. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll come and take notes, but I don't really want to study myself. Again, coming back to the cake. Then you have part of the ingredients. That's part of the reason why you're struggling with some of the same things you've struggled over and over. Because it's not just pick and choose, but it's the totality of those working in our life. So they wanted to spiritually grow. How many of you, with your kids, your grandkids, or maybe you can remember back in the memory of your mind, how that your parents charted your growth? How many of you had a little place on a wall where they marked how high you grew, okay? I never had that. I grew so quick, my parents were afraid that by the time that I was 10, I was going to be 8 foot tall and weigh 500 pounds. So thank God that kind of leveled off. But our parents were excited that we would grow. And we wanted to grow, right? Measure me, measure me. It's like going to Disneyland or, or there, and you know, you come to that little place where you got to be this tall. I think I'm almost there. I, I'm almost there. And so you, you try to get up to that place. And our spiritual father's the same way. He's simply saying, How many marks have you grown? Are you growing or have you stagnated? Are you shrinking? So the object is we want to grow. You see, you can grow old and not grow up. I met a lot of old people in church that still wear spiritual pampers. Just saying. You can grow old, but not grow up. Second Peter three seventeen and eighteen says, "You already know these things, dear friends. So be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure feeding." Feet footing. Rather, you must grow. Say that with me. You must look at your neighbor and say, you must grow. 
You must grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All glory to Him, both now and forever. When something is not growing, we get concerned. Right? I mean, it's natural that our children grow. And so if they're not growing, we take them to the doctor and say, why aren't they growing? So I'm saying to us today, if you are where you were five years ago, you need to ask yourself, why am I not growing? Why am I not growing? The moment we stop growing spiritually, we start dying. Something is wrong. 1 John 2 12 through 14 says, I'm writing to you who are God's children. Underline that phrase there in your Bible, children. Because your sins are forgiven through Jesus. I'm writing to you mature in the faith. In other words, somebody's grown up a little bit. Because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. And he says, I'm writing to you young in faith because you've won your battle with the evil one. I have written to you who are God's children because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I have written those of you that are young in the faith because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts and you have won your battle with the evil one. Notice if you want to just jot down in your notes. He's talking to three different types of people. He says, first of all, I want to talk to you that are spiritual children. Those of you who have just received Jesus into your heart, your sins are forgiven, you've been baptized. He said, I want to, I want to write to you. I, I want to congratulate you that you've grown. You've grown from being an, an unbeliever, someone who has no life. Listen, if you're here today and you've never repented of your sins and invited Jesus into your life, you don't have a life. You are spiritually dead. You are dead because of sin that's in your life. But he says, I'm writing to those of you that are just beginning to grow. And I'm making a mark here because you, you've invited Jesus to come into your life. And then he says, they're spiritual young men. Not just children, but spiritual young men. You're strong. You're reading God's word. You're involved in the case of Christ. And you are advancing the kingdom. And then he says, I'm writing to you spiritual fathers, those of you that are mature. You've known him from the beginning. You're growing. There's things that are happening in your life. Life is about growth. When we stop, listen to this, when we stop growing up, we start growing out. And I'm not talking about physically, although if we're not con continually growing up and strengthening our muscles, we just grow out. All right. But have you ever noticed people who can quit growing up? They start growing out and they just flop all over everybody that's around them. Negativity, criticism, fault finding. Why? Because they're not looking up. They're looking out. So they find something in you they don't like. They find something in somebody else they don't like. Why? Taking their picture off of themselves and on to somebody else. In today's teaching, we're going to look at the third ingredient of being a fully devoted life, a follower of Christ. Here it is. Fill it in the blanks. Be intentional about growth. Say that with me. Be intentional about growth. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Be intentional about growth. You, you've got to be intentional. What are you doing? What did you do intentionally last week to grow in him. What's your, what's your growth plan? I've challenged our staff, and I'm working with this because my life coach has challenged me. What's your next five-year growth plan? What, what are you doing? What are you laying out? Well, I just hope this happens. Well, what's your plan? And in our small group that I'm leading of developing leaders, each one of them are developing a growth plan for their life. So what's your growth plan? What is the plan that you have for your life? What is your growth plan? If you don't have a map or you don't know how to do that, if you'll just uh, fill out your connection card today and say, uh, would you email me the growth plan so that I can work on that? I'd be happy to help you with that because I want you to develop a plan of growth because here it is, the second fill in, life is all about growing. Say that with me. Life is about growing. 
Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says, And now, just as you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you must continue, say continue, that's be intentional to follow him. Let your roots go down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thanksgiving. He uses a tree analogy and he says, send your roots down. A tree grows until the day it dies. Sadly, some Christians die at 35 and we bury them at 75. You say, well, how can I tell if I'm growing or I'm not? How can I tell if somebody's dying? Three things. Here they are. You can write them down. You have three things you can write down. It's not in your notes, but here it is. They stop learning. They stop learning. They stop maturing. And they stop caring. They stop learning. They stop maturing. And they stop caring. In other words, here's the, those who, who stop caring, here's the theme verse. Here's the word they use all the time. Well, Whatever. You know, just whatever. You marshmallow wuss. You soft. Come on. Whatever. I'm not going to use that word. I'm not going to allow that word. Parents, you shouldn't allow that word in your family with your kids. Well, whatever will be whatever, 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 whatever will be. No, no. Listen, you make choices that determine your future. The decisions you made yesterday determine the life that you live today. Some people stop learning. And you say, well, how do I know people stop learning? They never share anything new. They're always talking about, well, you know, I remember. I remember. And I remember. Uh, they, they haven't read a book. Uh, they don't read the Bible. They've never attended a seminar. They, they haven't even been to a growth track. They don't take ner- notes on a sermon to share with somebody else. They don't watch podcasts. Listen, I'm a leader. I'm a learner. And I read everything I can get my hands on. Because when we started this church 22 years ago, you better thank God that I'm not the same person that I was 22 years ago. If you were here 22 years ago, say amen. That's okay, all right? How do I grow? I read. I listen. Almost every week I have people that are my friends will say, hey, watch this podcast or how you say, read this book or somebody else say, have you heard this or watch this DVD? Why? And I, 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 you know, I would think, wow, I turned 68 last week. That should be enough. But the moment I stop growing, the moment I stop growing, this church stops growing. You stop growing. Parents, the moment you stop growing up in Christ is the moment that your kids stop growing. And you wonder why they don't want to come to church. They hear you. In marriage, if one of you grows and the other doesn't, you grow apart. There's no way. Because you're growing up and the other's staying stagnant. You know what happens? Then they'll usually criticize you. Then they'll complain. They'll try to tick you off so that you become angry and say something you shouldn't say. Why? Because they see growth in your life, but they don't like the growth uh, that's happening in their life. Listen, marriage is more than just saying, I will or I do. You have to learn to stay married. Hello? Let me try it over here. You've got to learn to stay married. You've got to grow. Uh, the Bible says to us men, live with your wife in an understanding way. Some of you understand more about fishing and hunting than you do how to live with your wife. You've been divorced two or three times working on your fourth and you wonder what's wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. You haven't grown in the area of what it means to be a real man. It takes more than just a zipper to make you a real man. It takes a man that will step out and grow and grow in his understanding of Christ. The Bible says, Beverly, a soft answer turns away wrath. So if one partner begins raising their voice, uh, the other, we just lower our voice a little bit. We don't go to the same level. Why? Because we're growing. Because we're growing. I'm not as good as I should be, but I tell you, I'm better than I used to be. I used to be so reactionary. 
I really did. But I learned, and Nita's helped me with this, I, to, to work with a team, I have to be a good listener. I have to try to find a little patience somewhere. Kindness, because they're fruit of the Spirit. I mean, things used to tick me off like crazy. I'm a little more mature now. It takes a little longer for things to tick me off. I mean, I was so reactionary with my kids, right? I mean, the least little thing, bam, 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 bam. Now with my grandkids, shoot. I mean, remember when you first had your first kid? You carried them like they were uh, 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 atomic nuclear waste. You know, you just, you, you were afraid that you were going to drop them. You didn't want to put them in the nursery. Listen, no kid has ever died in a church nursery. And so that's our first one, right? We're just so careful. Oh, I've got to be careful. The second one, you just go by the, uh, the learning center and you just throw them in. Why? Because we grow. We grow in that. Life is about growing. You, we have to get better at anything we do. Those of you that are doctors, you're constantly uh, going to seminars to upgrade. Those of you that sell uh, real estate, you have to, you have to go to that. Uh, those of you, any, any trade that you have in life, whether you uh, do it or not, there's always something to be better at that. You see, in, in school we called it copying. If you found somebody that was doing right, and you, that, we call that copying. But in life, it's not copying. It's finding somebody who's doing something better than you are and saying, how do you do that? I want to mimic that because I want to grow. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better owner. I want to be a better business person. I want to know what you do. First Peter 2 and 2 says, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. Cry out for the nourishment. If you're not hungry to grow, you're dying. When you go to hospice, one of the things that people start doing is they lose their appetite to grow. One of the first things you can see in somebody that's dying spiritually. They don't have a hunger. They don't have a hunger for the word. They don't have a hunger to pray. They don't have a hunger for church. You're dying. And the Lord sent me here today to just breathe life into you from his word. Growth is about transformation. We looked at the verse last week of, uh, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 that says God wants to transform us into being a new person. So growing is about transformation. It's moving from what we're not to something we should be. And it starts with getting my thinking right, right? So, so what should I do? Romans 8 and 29 says this. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be, say the word with me, conformed to the image of his son. Say it again. Conformed to the image of his son. The word con means with. So it means the goal of growth is to be changed or to conform to the shape, the actions, the thinking of Jesus Christ. So if we're growing we, we renew our mind so that we can be transformed and we will learn more of him so that we can be more like Jesus. Some of you are 80 and 90 and you're more like Jesus today than you were when you were 30. Aren't you thankful for that? Some of you today are 50 and 60. You sure know that you're a lot closer, more like Jesus than, than you were even a year ago. That's what we're talking about here. And if I don't see those marks, if other people don't see their, those marks in my life, I'm dying. I love it when people say, I don't mean to say, speak bad or, or to embarrass you, but, you know, you, you, you are a much more kinder person than you used to be. Well, thank God you noticed. Because I've been working on that. You know, I thank God that you... You've, you've changed in this area. You know, immediately we get in our mind, well, what do they mean? I mean, if I'm saying, no, look, I know I'm growing and I'm changing and I'm not where I should be. But I'm saying, I want to lead today. I want to lead a revelation of growth. I want you to recommit today that we're going to do this thing together. That's why we're in life groups together. That's why we come on Sundays because we want to do this together. And, and Romans 12 it says, I want you to be transformed. I want you to be transformed. Have your form changed by the what? renewing of your mind notice it doesn't say by a renewed mind right it says a 
renewing your mind. In other words, it means it's a constant process. Every week I have to renew my mind to think like him, to pray like him, to be like him. Habits practiced over a long period of time will help us to grow. One of the most fundamental of those is what you're doing today, weekly worship. I think the second most fundamental is reading your Bible daily. It causes us to think more accurately. Listen, you can read Cosmopolitan. You can read Reader's Digest, Sports Illustrated, mechanic, Mechanics Arms, or Flop and Flip, and whatever you want to do. And there will be partial truth in that. But I'm going to tell you, there's no partial truth in this. That is the truth, the Word of God that directs us, that changes us, gets us refocused. And we need to be in there every day. And that's how I change my thinking. I confess this word every day. I, I don't use words like I can't or I won't or will never. But I, I say what he says. I am justified by him. I am what God says I am. I can have what God says I can have. I can be who God has, says I can be. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I am the head, not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I confess that I am learning. I am growing. I'm becoming like him. Listen, I refuse I refuse to allow Republican, Democratic, Caucasian, African American, Hispanic friends to limit my life. Some of you are hanging around with pygmies. They don't want to grow. They just want to cause division no matter what. But I'm going to tell you, we got to rise above that in God. And we got to begin saying what God says about us and be who he... Listen, deep calls to deep. Iron sharpens iron. And stupid calls stupid. I know some of you are not going to like me today. But you will. Just because somebody comes to church with you, don't think they're not stupid. I'm not asking. Look around the people around you, all right? I'm very selective of who I let lay hands on me and pray for me. I'm very selective of who I allow to speak into my life you get in a small group and they're all negative and, and uh, criticizing and complaining and the life group leader doesn't do something about that, you call it Tanya. We're not going to allow that in any small group. You can discuss, you can talk, whatever you want. But if it's pulling people down and they're not building people up, then we need to make a change. Right? Say amen. amen. Say oh me. No, don't say oh me. So reading the Bible. It's like you say, man, I'm out of shape. I, I need to go back to the gym. Well, you go back to the gym, Al's going to start you on the little pink Barbie weights. You know, just two pounds. Why? Because he's not going to load you down with a hundred because then you're not going to show back up. So I'm not asking you today to take on 20,000 things. I'm just going to focus in one area today. One area is we're going to do it together that will help us grow, all right? So reading the Bible... God talks to me when I read the Bible and prayer is when I talk to God regardless of what people says on ABC when you read the Bible God talks to you all right he still talks so two options here they are option number one this week right under your notes right there right before we're born to reproduce option one if you haven't been praying then I'm going to challenge you for the next 21 days to simply do this. Read the Bible for five minutes. Five minutes, that's all. And I'm going to ask you to spend two minutes a day in talking to God. I didn't say prayer, but I say talking to God. Sometimes people say, well, <clears throat> I, I, I just don't pray very well. Of course you don't, because you don't practice it. You, you, you say, well, I, I don't know how. Well, you, you can't know how unless unless you practice it. You say, well, what, what do I pray? My my kid's got a headache, so what do I pray? Can you can you show me one of those big flowery prayers? No, just simply start and say, oh, God, heal Johnny. That's a start. 
That's a start right there. I'm not asking you to jump into uh, the prayer life that some people have. Some people are like that. And I'm not asking you to get weird. All right? Can I just talk a little bit about something? I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I see some people that think they're super spiritual get really weird when it comes time to pray at church. They're, they're groaning. And, uh, uh, you know, I... I've seen people just make horrible sounds and, and, and just, you know, making strange actions and just drawing attention to themselves. That's weird. You can do that at home. But why would you want to do that here? When there are unbelievers, people who maybe come to church for the first time in their entire life, and they see something like that. You can be weird as much as you want to be at home. Oh, we have people sometimes, they want to bring flags, and they want to bring material, and they want to bring tambourine, they, and they want to come right down front. I've always thought that's interesting. Why do you want to come right down front? If they're not doing it on the stage, if they're not dancing and, and, and flowing with the flags or, or doing those things, why would you want to do that? Usually it's because a person wants to draw attention to themselves. So I simply say, sometimes me or I send one of the ushers to them and I'll say, just tell them next week when they come. That'd be fine if they want to do that. We have a corner back there and we have a corner back there. They can fling the stuff all they want to fling the stuff. But they're not going to do it down here. That's weird. You can do it at home. Listen, I am a no-nonsense kind of guy. If you want to get weird and spooky, you do that at home. But if you're out of order here, if everybody's singing softly and you're singing louder, come on, listen, listen, listen to people around you. You're overpowering them, all right? And if, and, and if this team is going into a solemn time of worship and, and you're trying to get loud and, and, and make sure everybody sees how spiritual you are, stop it, stop it. Follow the stage. Follow what they're doing. Now, if the kids are down here and we're down here, and we have a mosh pit and we're doing good, just join in and have fun, all right? It's okay, all right? There we go. Shush. Beverly, it got quiet in here. Who's got you back? One of the things I detest as I get older is a silent friend. You know what a silent friend is? A person who says they're your friend, but they don't stand up for you. They don't defend you. They don't represent you. People have prejudice against you. And they'll simply say, well, I didn't agree with what they said. Then why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you say something? Listen, I'm going to go to bat for my friends. I may not always agree with everything they do that's ugly. But I'll tell you what I will. I'll have their back. So let's do this. Option one. Option two is if you're already reading, read the Bible 10 minutes a day and um, spend five minutes a day in talking to God. And then write down one sentence describing the point of your reading. That's called meditating. Meditating. One more principle and then we're going to pray. Here it is. You were born to reproduce. You were born to reproduce. A healthy tree that's an apple tree produces apples. A healthy strawberry plant produces strawberries. So what are you producing? Are you producing the fruit of the Spirit? Are you producing other Christ followers? Uh, Jesus said this. This is in red, John 15, 5 and 8. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce what? will produce what? For apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples. This brings great glory to the Father. When you produce much fruit, what fruit are you producing? Have you brought joy into people's lives? Husbands, have you brought joy into your marriage and with your kids this week? Or are you just, when they see you coming, they want to go the other way? How about at church? 
I mean, the people you rub shoulders with when you're at Walmart and they see you coming, do they duck, duck down into the freezer to, to not even be around you? But not only that, but who are you inviting to church? Easter's getting ready, all right? Who are you investing in and inviting? In inviting to church. And so who is that? Thank God somebody came and invited you years ago. Let me, let me ask you to just, just think about this. I'm, I'm, I'm finished right now. You can, you can put your pen down. We'll have one more confession here at the end. But picture this in your mind. Just close your eyes. And I don't mean to embarrass anybody by this. Just see yourself either fit or flabby. Which do you think would feel better? Now transfer that into the spiritual realm. First of all, imagine yourself as not caring a whole lot about anything. You don't even care about people. You're self-centered. You're lazy. You don't value telling the truth. You don't keep your word. You don't help others. That's one you could be. Now imagine this. Catch, catch a picture of this. Now flip the, the picture. Imagine yourself as a spiritual giant. You're trustworthy, other-centered. People admire your character because you tell the truth. You're patient. You're self-controlled. You enjoy life. Which feels better? To be fit or to be flabby? As for me and my house, I want to be spiritually fit. How about you? Say, I I'm, I'm up for this challenge. Let's, let's read this together at the very end there. Let's, let's say this together. Lord Jesus, I want to grow this week. I will renew my mind more than I have ever before. I will attend a small group. I will spend time with you in the Bible and in prayer. And I will show up here next week, worship you well. In Jesus' name, amen. I am up for this challenge. I am up for this challenge. Let's bow our heads. I don't know where you are today, and I sure hope you didn't catch this teaching as just a, a condemning teaching of saying, well, you know, you've really failed here. I hope you heard what I said, that I just want you to take just a step. I don't want you to be grow, uh, dying, but I want you to be growing. And so I'm going to pray for you this week. And if you have a special prayer need, you can put it on that um, connection card. And in just a minute, we'll receive the tithe and offering. You can put it on there. But before I go there, I want to talk to some of you that are here today that maybe you don't see yourself this way, but you are, you're, you're dead. You see, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them as perfect in a perfect relationship with him. But when sin entered into the world, it tainted them and it separated them from the life-giving breath force of Jesus in their spirit. And so they were separated from him. And if you're here today, and if, and if you've lived your whole life, and you've, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, you've never become a Christ follower, here's how that God sees you today. Dead. Spiritually dead. But he loved you so much, he didn't want to leave you that way. He didn't send you rules. He didn't say, send you legislation. He sent you himself, his son, knowing that I could never, I could never get good enough to be in relationship with God. And Jesus, who knew no sin, walked in this world sinless. He went to a cross. He took on your sins and your deadness. And they laid him in a tomb. But on the third day, he arose. Why? Because he's simply saying, I don't want you to live a dead life. I want you to live in my resurrection power. And the scripture says today, as we said earlier, they said to Peter, what do we need to do? He said to repent and be baptized and be filled with the Spirit. The, Paul said, if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Christ and that he was raised from the dead, I could be saved. So if you're here today, I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to some hearts right now. And you're away from God. You know you are. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to point out to you and say, you, 
you need to decide for Christ today because the way you're living your life is just not working. If you would allow me the privilege of praying with you, of beginning this journey, this life-giving journey with Jesus, would you raise your hand right where you're sitting and make eye contact with me and say, yeah, that's me today. I, I need to be included in this prayer. I don't want to live the way that I'm living anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Others today, just lift your hand. Thank you. I don't want to live this way anymore. I realize right now my sins are separating me from God. And I realize that Jesus died for those. And man, I, I, I just need his forgiveness. I just sense the Lord is speaking to somebody else today. Maybe it's somebody online. Even right where you're sitting there or standing, you can just raise your hand. Others today say, that's me. I want to make this decision. I want to make this journey today. I want to begin in this way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me lead us in a prayer. But it's you that repent of your sins and confess what Christ has done for you on the cross. And in this shirt, he says, I'll come into your life and I'll give you life. Pray this prayer with me today. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who went to the cross for my sins and died for me. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I turn away from my sins today, and I turn towards you. Fill me with your spirit as best as I know how. I want to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with me today, I have a little book that I want to give you. It's just helping you get started in the right journey. It's not just a prayer today, but it's a journey. And uh, if you'll raise your hand, the ushers will be happy to give that to you. Just raise your hand. Come on, church. Let's celebrate those who made that decision today. Hallelujah. And let me, let me just say this. You see on the screen there, just a couple of things. Attend Fresh Start. Fresh Start is at 9 o'clock every um, Sunday morning in the uh, building next door, and it just helps you get started. If you don't have a Bible, we'll give you a Bible in Fresh Start, all right? Uh, we have other classes. And then tell somebody today what Christ has done for you. Amen. Well, thank you. We're getting ready to receive our tithe and our offering today. So if you'll get ready for that, let me just remind you just of a couple of things. You can still sign up for Life Group. We drop, drop our change in today. Our change goes to help people that are in need. And uh, uh, just remember the quarter auction. You can pre-order food out there for that. Thank you again for coming today. Let's invite somebody next week. Let's fill it out. We have two more weeks of this series. Uh, two of the, I think, some, two of the better teachings that are coming up. So be sure you come. Invite people. If you see somebody who hasn't been here for a while, invite them. Let's, uh, let's hold up our tithe and our offering this morning. And let's uh, make this confession. Lord, receive our tithe and offerings as an expression of our love and obedience to you. We thank you, Lord, for all you have given us. You are the provider of all things. According to your word in Malachi 3, we ask that you rebuke the devourer and open the windows of heaven, pouring out your overflowing blessings and expanding our borders with jobs, raises, commissions, bonuses, and benefits. We are believing for sales, settlements, unexpected income, interest, inheritance, wise investments, and debts being paid. As we honor your word, give us favor with man. Give us wisdom and creativity to craft and invent what will and bring wealth into the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs. Help us to be good stewards of all that you have given us that we might give into your kingdom and to promote the gospel. Amen. Would you stand? The usher is going to pass the buckets, and I want to release a blessing over you today. Just drop your tithe and offering in there today, and after you do that, would you just lift your hands? Let me remind you, every Saturday morning at 8 o'clock to 9, we have prayer here. Come and join us. We're in the middle of a 40-day prayer challenge. You're going to learn a lot.
Would you just lift your hands right now? I just bless you today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you have a prayer need today, our prayer team will be down front to pray with you in just a minute. I speak blessings over you. I speak health. I speak strength into your marriage. I speak growth into your life. I say today, may you come alive in a desire to grow. May there be a new spiritual hunger in you to grow. A new hunger for His Word. A new hunger to talk to Him in, in, in prayer. And I speak over you today as you leave today. Let me remind you the reason we exist is leading people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. And we do that by learning to love God, help people, and build the kingdom. God bless you. If I haven't met you, I'd love to meet you in the foyer this morning. Thank you for coming. Let's worship in song. No matter what it takes for the glory of your name, Christ alone be praised. We're stepping out in faith so the world will know your name, Christ alone be praised. No matter what it takes for the glory of your 